Hey everyone, CW Music Reviews here. I'm CWD, and this is going to be a music review of the new Deerhoof album, The Magic. Deerhoof are a California noise rock, indie pop, indie rock quartet, and this is their latest full length album. These guys have been around for quite a few decades, about a couple of decades specifically, though I can't say that I've hopped on to as much of their work as I wish I have, and I'm going to rectify that at some point in my life. But I did hop on to these guys when they dropped their 2012 release, Breakup Song. That was a really fun record. It was like a nice fusion of like some electronics. They're established noise rock and noise pop and any rock sound that they've got going for them. There's not really any bands out there quite as unique and quite as standalone as Deerhoof. And given that, the straightforward nature of a good chunk of the tracks off of their next album, La A La Bonita, this made quite a bit of sense why I would like it. While there wasn't really anything new about that album in particular, it still showed a lot of standalone songwriting and solid compositions. Add to that, the sound that they were going for still was pretty fresh. It was still pretty visceral and pretty interesting and catchy what they were doing. And that's what I like about Deerhoof. They've got their own sound, they've got their own mark in music right now. So I saw no reason to check out this new album, The Magic. What spell have Deerhoof? cast upon me. Deerhoof on this album are essentially doing what they've been doing for uh, quite a while now, but this time around it's a bit more loose, a bit more visceral, a bit more experimental in a way, and they just unapologetically do not give a fuck. This album is about 15 tracks long, about 45 or so minutes in length. It's definitely a good length in particular. It doesn't feel long, nor does it feel too brief. Though given as many times as I've listened to this album, and as much as I find myself addicted to this album, it does in a sense feel like I just really can't get enough of what Deerhoof is doing. You pretty much get an idea of what it is Deerhoof got going for them when you listen to the opening track. The Devil and His Anarchic Surrealist Retinue. It's got this like slinky and dirty, I don't know if that's a bass guitar or some kind of six string guitar but it's just really visceral. The track as a whole feels really loose and simultaneously multifaceted since it's got so much rhythms just packed into like two and a half minutes. It's lo-fi as a good chunk of these tracks are, but it's not so lo-fi that there's no clarity to any of these tracks here and I dig that quite a bit. It's just like a really fun track and that's the thing about this album. A good chunk of these tracks here are loose, they're fun, to listen to. And they even sound really fun to make, like the track Cafe Mania, which, again, loose, and there's this just really off-the-wall pattern of vocal line, followed by this, like, blast of just visceral and just unforgiving instrumentation before then just goes back to that over and over. It kind of sounds like this really addictive and just really 100% efficiency type combo move in a game of like Street Fighter or something. That's that's what it feels like. There's some interesting synth going on in the background that really adds texture. I do like what they're going for here. And that again seems to be the case with a track like Dispossessor. Just a really hard hitting track with a pretty catchy hook here. It kind of sounds like surf punk mixed with Deerhoof's noise rock. I do gotta give it to the album for also taking in a lot of stylistic risks on this album. It's definitely an experimental record for Deerhoof or what I've been listening to of Deerhoof. There's a couple of tracks here that take so much risk that I'm not 100% <laughs> sure what to think about them. Like the track, That Ain't No Life For Me, which sounds like some really sunny and lo-fi punk rock. Fronted by a male vocalist, or one of the male vocalists and musicians on this album. I haven't been able to get my hands on some liner notes for this album, so I'm pretty shady on the who's who. A good chunk of these tracks are fronted by the usual female vocalist whose name 
It escapes me right now. There are some moments where she and another member are singing in tandem or this male member it has taken complete control over the lead vocals on the track. And in this case with this track that ain't no life for me, that definitely seems to be the case. These vocals I guess being about meeting his doppelganger, noticing how it is he is living his life and saying that oh yeah that's some bullshit, I'm not living that life at all. There's also the track I Don't Wanna Set the World on Fire which is a cover of the Ink Spot song that a lot of people got familiar with because of the Fallout 3 soundtrack. And it's just so spacey and so, like, weird. It's just, I, I don't know. It's just so lo-fi and left feel that I'm not sure whether I even like it or not. Because on one hand, I do like the idea going on here, but it just feels so out there that it doesn't feel like executed well, but simultaneously it's still a pretty clever and really cool idea. There's a good chunk of tracks that really execute a lot of catchy songwriting while simultaneously being juxtaposed by Deerhoof's unapologetic and really visceral sound. Tracks like Learning to Apologize Effectively and the closing track, Nurse Me. <laughs> Nurse Me is a really fun track and like it, many tracks here, I can tell they're definitely having a lot of fun with this track. There's just like this off-kilter and just sudden dissipating chaos going on. They have like the main theme before it just like cuts off and there's like these cowbells just clicking off at the tail end of each line. Yeah, it's just pretty wild. There's moments like Criminals of the Dream that seem to take on some dream pop in a way. With this ethereal synth intro that goes on before like the main instrumentation comes in. Driving bass and the uh, off-kilter guitar. It's a nice use of harmony with the synth and it's definitely clever and cohesive fusion of their particular sound and dream pop. There's just so many things that I can say about a good chunk of these tracks and before I got started reviewing this album, I thought to myself, wait, I gotta actually sit down and start analyzing this stuff? Damn, I really just wanted to sit down and just listen to the damn thing since I love it so much. Because that's the magic here. Deerhoof pretty much decided not to care in a sense. They are focusing more on just indulgence and just you know, the fun and the magic of music and art, instead of actually focusing more so on putting together all these songs for the next record. They're not worried about meeting a quota at this point, and so much they're worried about whether or not they're having fun with the art they're making. I feel like I'm reciprocating, like, my enjoyment here. I'm more worried about whether or not I'm enjoying this record and how much I'm listening to this record than I am actually having one perspective about it. Because when you're listening to tracks like Life is Suffering, which is pretty mid-paced and altogether catchy, I like the hook here. Life is suffering, man. Life is suffering, man. Before it goes into like this like sudden fast-paced type instrumentation that drives to the end particularly well. I'm thinking to myself simultaneously, yeah, I definitely gotta review this to like let everyone know that this is a particularly good record. But on the other hand, I'm like, oh man, I gotta review this? I don't know how much I can refrain from just like enjoying the music long enough for me to like start gathering my thoughts for it and for a review. Because there's so many tracks here that are just fun and there's not really a single bad track in particular. Some lowlights for me though, like the track Pastrache Come Back, which is just a brief solo vocal and bass track that is so brief I don't really know what to say about it. Plus there's the track Model Behavior, which is one of the more straightforward tracks on the record and maybe is a little too loose for its own good. Although with this track, there's like a really cool and wicked noise passage that comes on the tail end. Kind of reminds me of like the latest St. Vincent record or if Mersbell decided to get into production for pop records. But even then, there's not really a horrible track on the record. There's no track that's bad, just subjectively speaking, like a mix of like different sounds for everybody. There's something in here for you that you're gonna like a lot. Whether you end up like disliking this album but end up having a few takeaway tracks that you enjoy a lot, or you end up loving the shit out of it but only having like one or two tracks that you just think, eh, they're all right. And that's pretty much me. I enjoy this album a lot and I'm definitely looking forward to what Deerhoof are going to come up with next, especially since if 
they're going to keep doing like this type of sound where it's just loose, chaotic, and just unapologetically unapologetic. This album is a plus 2.5 out of plus 3. If you're into noise rock, indie rock, noise pop, indie pop, if you like standalone shit, then you'll definitely get something out of this. But if you give this album a listen, what you think of it? Did you like this album? Did you dislike this album? What was your reason for that? And what should I consider listening to and reviewing next? The CW Music Reviews here, signing off.